Okay, in the last video I was talking about the oxygen binding curve for hemoglobin and myoglobin, and I said a few things about it. I said that hemoglobin kind of has this cooperative binding where each subsequent oxygen is easier to put on than the previous one, whereas myoglobin has this hyperbolic curve here and that it's binding oxygen really tightly even at very low pressure. And, th and this is really going to just come back to their function. Myoglobin has a different function than hemoglobin. The purposes are different and uh, what they do is different. So that's why you see this really, really fast moving graph here, this hyperbolic curve. It's going, it's shooting up really, really quick and then leveling off at 100% saturation. And I wanted to say a little bit more about that and I wanted to say around here, so if I were to draw like a little line around this 40 here, this actually corresponds to the PO2 in tissue. So this corresponds to the PO2 in tissue. And if we go over here to 100 and we draw like a little kind of range over which this will occur, this actually corresponds to the PO2 in the lungs. So if this is the PO2 in the lungs, hemoglobin is going to be fully saturated at this point, meaning all the binding sites, or essentially all of the binding available binding sites are going to be filled at this point in the lungs. And if you start going back down the curve this way, what's going to wind up happening is you're going to start losing oxygens. The sites are, the available site, the um, number of sites occupied is actually going to start becoming less occupied. They're going to be, the number of, so the sites are going to be less occupied. They're going to be losing oxygens, essentially, is what I'm trying to say here with that without messing myself up too much, you're going to be losing oxygens as you move down until you get to the P50 point at 26 Tor, which corresponds to 50% of the available sites being having oxygen bound to them. So 50% of the sites have oxygen bound to them at this point. So basically, as you're moving down, you're going to be releasing oxygen E easier and easier as the pressure decreases. So you can see here, if this is the pressure in the tissue, it's going to be much easier to release oxygen in the tissue here where it's needed, and it's going to bind oxygen much tighter in the lungs where obviously you're taking oxygen in. So that kind of leads me to the next part here. Um, let's see if I can get it up here. Okay. So that leads me to the next part. I'm not going to go over what the x-axis is because that's just the partial pressure of oxygen. And at at one tor, this would be there'd be 100% binding of oxygen to um, hemoglobin here. So I'm not really going to go over that. What I really want to get to is now the upshot. So what is the function of myoglobin? That's what I want to get to. So th so essentially, the function of myoglobin is to store oxygen. So the function of myoglobin is to store oxygen. Okay? And more importantly, it's to I should I should be more specific about this. It's actually to store oxygen in the muscle. Okay? So it's storing oxygen in the muscle. And it binds O2 very tightly at low pressure. So what I wanted to say about that is 50% saturation occurs at one tor. So 50% saturation occurs at one tor. So the function of myoglobin is to store oxygen in muscles. It binds O2 very tightly at low pressure. And 50% saturation occurs at one tor. And that's exactly what we see on the graph that we marked up. We can see it's binding oxygen really tightly. And this, and this curve directly relates to its function. It's, it's telling us exactly what the purpose of myoglobin is, which is to store oxygen. Then the second question, I want to say what's the function of hemoglobin? Now this might be the more important one to most people and, and, and might be... So 
the function of hemoglobin so the function of hemoglobin is in oxygen transport so it's in oxygen transport and hemoglobin must be able to bind oxygen tightly at a, at a high pressure or at high pressure so it must be able to bind oxygen tightly at high pressure so that would be like 100 tor and for reference these are the conditions found in the lungs so these are the conditions found in the lungs so that's exactly what I was talking about when I was showing you guys the graph before I was saying you know at 100 tor there's going to be complete saturation of the hemoglobin every available site is going to be occupied by oxygen and those are the conditions found in the lungs so it makes perfect sense that at high pressure hemoglobin is going to have all, all oxygen is going to be bound to the hemoglobin so those are conditions found in the lungs but it must also be able to, it must also be able to release oxygen at low pressure so it must also be able to release oxygen at low pressure So say 40 tor, as I said, was the uh, so 40 tor, as I said, was the pressure for tissue, PO2 in tissue. So that's the PO2 in tissue. But maybe more telling than the PO2 in tissue is in capillaries. So in capillaries of active muscle. in capillaries of active muscle the pressure of oxygen is 20 tor so the pressure of oxygen is 20 tor so pressure of oxygen is 20 tor and this is less than this is less than 50 percent saturation of hemoglobin which occurs at 26 tor so what I'm saying by by saying at this 20 tor is I'm saying that this is a this is a low enough pressure that's going to easily give up the oxygen hemoglobin wants to give up the oxygen remember it's a transport it's an oxygen transport protein that's the whole purpose of it so at low pressure it wants to give up oxygen at high pressure it wants to bind oxygen tight and that and that's essentially all I'm saying by writing this out this way and that's exactly what I'm going to say to finish this off is that hemoglobin will give up the oxygen where it's needed so hemoglobin will give up the oxygen where it's needed so to just go over this one more time before we finish this video the function of myoglobin is to store oxygen it's an, it's an oxygen storage protein and more specifically it stores oxygen in the muscles it binds O2 very tightly at low pressure and its 50% saturation is 1 tor so that just that's exactly what I'm saying 50% saturation with oxygen myoglobin is 50% saturated with oxygen at 1 tor very low pressure it binds oxygen extremely tight and the function of hemoglobin is in oxygen transport and hemoglobin must be able to bind oxygen tightly at very high oxygen pressure so like 100 tor which is the conditions found in the lungs and it also must be able to release oxygen at low pressure so 40 tor or in the case of the capillaries of active muscles 20 tor which is far less than the 50 percent saturation point for hemoglobin which occurs at 26 tor
and which occurs at 26 torr. So hemoglobin will give up oxygen where it's needed, and that and that's the whole point. Hemoglobin, and that's why it's a transport. It, it's an oxygen transport protein, and not an oxygen storage protein. So hopefully this is a decent introduction, and hopefully I've given you a decent idea of how led you through what we're doing here, and showed you that this oxygen binding curve can be extremely important and resourceful, and give you a lot of information about um, hemoglobin and myoglobin characteristics.